guys, welcome back to our Live Well podcast. We are here with another dynamic, exciting episode for you today. Now, before I get into it, and of course, you all know, I have two people on set with me. Let me start by saying that. One that you all know and one that you all don't know, right? But first, I want to thank you guys so much for the feedback that we've been getting. You know, the engagement, the interaction on our social media pages, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We really appreciate it. And if you're new here, if it's your first episode, episode of this live well podcast we encourage you to check us out on social media at nestle caribbean uh, to stay you know just stay connected with us because we have so much more in store for you guys in this first season of the live well podcast now i'm here today with uh the lovely garfine who is my co-host for this wonderful podcast and today <laughs> we have also, the lovely Natalie Murray. So, hey. welcome, Natalie. Thank so, you. let me tell you all about Natalie, right? She is the director of the Life Store, yes? Yes, yes And yes. she's also a health coach. But what is the most important thing, specifically for this episode, is she's also a, a mother. mother, right? <laughs> a mother of three. And today's episode is particularly interesting because you guys know for this entire season, we have been speaking about various wellness and, um, you know, health topics, but they have been kind of geared more to an adult population. Now, this is also geared to an adult population. Don't get me wrong. But today we are going to be speaking about kids or children, right? We know that, um, parents are the i want to say the gatekeepers right children rarely make decisions as it relates to their health and wellness um at least not anything significant am i am i jumping ahead of myself because i feel like some kids me right but generally generally right um you know parents are they're the ones that do the shopping at the supermarkets and they're the ones that schedule um appointments with physicians they're the ones that cook the food at home mm -hmm. so today we want to talk about um children's or kids health as it relates to their nutrition and their physical activity now the covid pandemic it kind of highlighted to us um the the increased in sedentary lifestyles almost every child now has a phone has a tablet there that mm -hmm. they are on constantly yep. you know a long time it would be you go outside you're playing you're running around now it's like i need to download this app i need to watch this movie i need to do this i need to do that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know how is that is that affecting their health is it making them um Sedentary. get smarter mm -hmm. You think oh, so? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. These things maybe. It's I don't a know. struggle. It's a yes, struggle. Yes, I'll, I'll chalk it, it up to that. It's a struggle. <laughs> it is. It's a struggle. Right? And then on the flip side, so that's the physical activity. But then on the flip side, as relates to food, I mean, you're being sedentary, so you're already not burning off the calories. Mm -hmm. And then you're picky. You don't want to eat this. You don't want to eat that. You don't like this. You don't like that. So they're probably not even getting the proper nutrition. So this is the conversation that we want to have today. That's cool. That's I'm so right. excited. That's Sounds right. good. I'm so excited. That's right. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm, I, I, I might not have. I, I, I'm, before we've discussed it, I yes. don't have kids. Right. But you know, I am the rich uncle. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So I can win on these conversations because right. I know what my nieces and nephews and godkids want. And yes. so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited <laughs> because I've been through it already. And I, yeah. I've literally seen them from they were younger yeah. and how they all differ in terms of what they like to eat when yep. they eat it and it's, mm -hmm. sometimes it baffles my mind yeah i'm not gonna put it out there yet because mm -hmm. i'm sure it's gonna come up <laughs> yeah. but it's it's for me it's really really interesting just to see how yeah. um dynamic children are as yeah. they grow up and, and in yeah. terms of how they consume food <laughs> no, and when yeah. they're very funny you know like extremely funny i am also i am the bougie aunt guys i am not claiming to be rich but i am the bougie aunt <laughs> i probably live way above my means right but i was i was babysitting a kid the other day <laughs> And we ordered pizza and they picked off every single topping and ate the dough and the sauce. Yeah. And, ah. I, and I was like, what? What? That's not a pizza. What is this? So this is the not, magic yeah. is That's in the, the sauce. sauce. In the sauce. <laughs> so you see where we're going to be going <laughs> right? with the conversation. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, Natalie, so um, as a health coach, mm. as a, a mom, um, how do you deal with picky eaters? Have you had to deal with picky eaters? In my, my personal life yes. and in my practice, yes. absolutely. Okay. Um, my, my kids have all been picky eaters. I think mm. my, my first daughter, she would eat 
Rice, mm -hmm. corn, chicken, and plantain. And that was it. it. And wow. they couldn't touch. Oh my God. They could not touch. <laughs> right? <laughs> my second daughter lived, mm -hmm. and I'm so embarrassed to mm -hmm. say this, but you know, there's nothing about hypocrisy, and mm -hmm. I just I do the best I can yeah. do, which I know all you parents, you're out there doing the best mm -hmm. that you can do. But sometimes kids express their... The only thing that they have control of is like what they're going to eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they can just lock their mouth and stop, right? Yes. My daughter would eat Doritos mm -hmm. and yogurt. That was it. Wait, oh, wait, wait. Ramen together? noodles. Doritos. No, oh, you that was the extent oh, that of her diet. Oh, wow. Doritos... <laughs> Yogurt and ramen noodles. Wow. So I did catch fire. Yeah. I did catch, yeah. Thank God the little one, she. But yeah. you know what? We're growing. Taste yes. buds are trainable. We're yes. growing. My big daughter loves salads. She's a healthy eater. She, okay. like, incorporates lots of vegetables. Right. I'm slowly getting the middle one to incorporate some vegetables and eat better. Still haven't gotten her to consume a fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the little one is a good eater. She's just a good eater from the beginning. So I've, I've had my fair share. So mm -hmm. I've learned how to be deceptive ah, with my yes. nutrition. Right. Um, and the way that I give them what they need. Because yeah. it's important. Could you yeah. explain that to me? You said you learn how to be deceptive. What yes. that? It, it sounds... Mm -hmm. Sneaky. Like yes. <laughs> <laughs> slightly menacing. Yeah. It is, it yeah. is. In what way? How? How do you do that? So, you know, as a, as a parent, when your child is not eating what you know they need to be eating, and then mm -hmm. you, and it worse that you've got the knowledge, right? So yes. you, you know that you're not setting them up to be their best selves down the road. You're really mm -hmm. trying hard to get stuff into their diet. Mm -hmm. I found this cookbook and it was called Deceptively Delicious. And Ooh. it taught me how to sneak vegetables into the stuff that the kids would already eat so right. pizza for example right boy may i tell you so my pizza sauce yeah. have one whole bag of steamed carrots and roast tomatoes wow. and even some beetroots in there yeah Blend <laughs> it up in the store-bought tomato sauce right. poured back into the bottle, bottle so that they see me making it because if right. they see any evidence of anything they're like hmm, what did she put in there yes. yeah. we know you yes we know you we know you put uh, something in there uh, oh no but now they're hearing this so now it's that's okay they're, they're, they're they, they know they're now. Now. okay good. They know okay. Now. <laughs> now they go there's carrots in these meatballs aren't yeah <laughs> I like, guess there are. <laughs> so we would sneak, I would sneak vegetables into the pizza sauce. Yeah. Curry chicken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put steamed carrots and to this day, I put steamed carrots mm -hmm. and steamed um, cauliflower. Okay. I blend it out in the mm -hmm. curry sauce yeah. and then wow. put it back in the curry chicken oh, nice. so that I'm getting, yep. Does in, it change the flavor at all? Mm -mm. No. Wow. Okay. It, the texture, it, it gets a little thicker, oh, right. but you can you can accommodate for that. Okay. Um, what else do I do? I put cauliflower in their mashed potatoes as well. So you okay. want to you be mindful not to change the, the color. Co right. So, or even the taste profile. And yeah. the taste profile. Yeah. So you don't want to do too much. Yeah. Yeah. But when I make meatballs, yeah. there's always shredded carrots and shredded mm. zucchini in okay. there okay. as well. It's interesting, okay, Sash, because yeah. if I'm not, if I'm, if... If I'm recalling correctly, a mm -hmm. part of the Net, Net for Healthy Kids program, um, there was a part in there that it spoke about parents cooking with their children yes. and deceptively mm -hmm. putting <laughs> stuff, introducing <laughs> things yeah. in there that are healthy for the kids. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So it, I, <laughs> it's very interesting that you're saying that now. So it's actually yeah. being practiced. Yeah, and I, and I, like that. yeah I, I remember we actually had um, a recipe that we shared, which was um, pumpkin mashed potato. I think, you know, you mash the pumpkin, but I guess yeah. as it, it would change the color a little bit. But I mean, for a young child who doesn't know what's supposed to be, they will just, what, what do you all say, nyam that down? Is nyam. that correct? <laughs> <Nyam>. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm so happy I was not in that era. My yeah. mother didn't have to deceptively um, do No, she just to told me. you, are not getting up from the table till you till eat your eat, vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> right. That, that, I grew up in that era. But yeah. you know what, though, Garfine? You sat at a table. With your mm -hmm. parents and had dinner. Yeah. yeah. That is not the reality. I mean, we try in our household, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But that's not the reality for a lot of parents. A lot no, of parents, we're true. doing things on the go. Our lives yeah. are so busy. We yeah. have our main work. We have our side hustle. Yeah. <sighs> the traffic is dread. Yeah. Uh, do you think yeah. that's something that is missing from our, from our culture now? Yeah. Yeah, eating together really as a family. Eating together as a family. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many, there's so many like spill off things that occur. Mm -hmm. So when you do not eat at a table, mm -hmm. you eat more. Mm -hmm. right. When you eat in front of the TV, you eat more and you also don't digest your Ooh, food well. I did see that. Yes. Yes. So you don't yeah. get the nutrients from your food and you get more indigestion. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I'm going to read some of that that, yeah. I, that I found. It's interesting mm -hmm. you should just say that. Yeah. It says, much of picky eating may be related to negative thoughts and memories about certain foods. 
or eating in general. The more you are upbeat and positive about eating, the more likely your child will be that way too. Mm -hmm. And let's share some ideas on how to do that. And the first idea was to have family meals. Enjoy each other during them. Each Eating together puts an emphasis on the social aspect of eating mm -hmm. rather than the food itself, which can be helpful. It's most help helpful if that, as that social aspect is pleasant. So put aside the devices and use mealtime as a time to catch up with each other. Mm -hmm. Tell funny stories and enjoy time together. So yes. you, you literally just yeah. said it and yeah. it is yeah. there. And I yeah. saw several articles actually that made mention of that. Mm -hmm. The other two things that he says, don't force a child to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, involve your child in meal, pla in meal planning and preparation, which yes. we spoke about earlier. Yes. So yes. The yeah, importance of that. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. We sit down, we sit down sometimes and um, we pick different meals, like in creation of what we're going to be eating mm -hmm. for the week mm -hmm. so that they, they have a say in what they're eating, yeah, yeah. you know, because that, that will encourage. And the other thing that I do mm -hmm. with my family, which I, I encourage parents as much as possible, mm -hmm. is we cook twice as much food as we need for dinner mm -hmm. so that I send them out with their lunch, with the leftovers. leftovers right. Yeah. Because I don't know what, the school lunches are getting are cooked with. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was going yeah. to ask you, what's your, what's your reason for doing that? What's mm -hmm. your why? Yeah, exactly. Because I don't want the kids eating. I mean, they, every once in a while, they're like, Mommy, can we just have patty today for lunch? I'm like, sure, sure, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I really want them to make sure that they're getting their nutrition at school as well. Yeah, that, the concept of a balanced diet. Because yeah. I think, I mean, I... I I'm talking from a, pers a perspective of an outsider, meaning I'm not involved in the school industry in mm -hmm. any way, but I would assume that these lunches, um, they would be lunches within a specific budget. Right. So you're not going to expect organic kale <laughs> or quinoa or any of these, you know, these lunches. So no. I think it's really important because we need to ensure that um, kids get the app appropriate nutrition because if not, they're not going to be learning, they're not going to de be developing, they're not going to be their best self as they continue mm -hmm. to grow. Mm -hmm. yep. so, you know, yeah. even our young athletes, uh, yes. I'm, I'm really impressed at the, like when I hear organizations making donations to like the football team and it's mm -hmm. really to feed yeah the the children because nourish and nurture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah because if they don't have the, your food is the building blocks of your body yep. yeah and even for adults like we mm -hmm. replace the cells in our body every seven to ten years right so yeah. you literally are what you literally, literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so if your child is not getting a good nutrition yeah. foundation you yeah. know like as daniel spoke about in the in the previous episode yeah. you know then what what are they using to build their brain build yeah. their capacity yeah. you know and our yeah. kids are so amazing they if we just are. give them the they the are. tools that they need to be their best selves you yeah. know yeah so would you say that picky eating then um is a learned behavior because I know we spoke about eating together as a family so so would you say that kids learn how to be picky eaters boy I'm I'm gonna apologize to my daughter first <laughs> but she did born difficult mm. from birth that child I couldn't my first daughter yeah. breastfed beautifully yeah. like, it was like oh I'm a pro I've been yeah. doing this forever look yeah. at this yeah. my second she used to fight me and kick me and I, li I literally like would cry and think I'm such a failure as yeah. a mother that yeah. I can't breastfeed this child like what so from from birth she was difficult right and then we got her starting to eat solids and she was doing okay and then mm -hmm. one day she just boxed with the food out of the high chair started to put down one piece of ball in yeah and that's when we switched to Doritos and um yogurt and, yogurt. Yogurt. Yeah. and it was it was like almost like if yeah. I don't feed her something she's going to die yeah. like she literally yeah. would go ages without eating yeah and yeah. something, another thing I saw, which probably ties back into that, uh, he said, power struggles can teach kids the wrong messages about food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's so tricky because that is, a, a child's pickiness is really their way of exerting a little bit of control but, over mm -hmm. one aspect, aspect of, of their, their life, life, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then if you engage in a power struggle, then we know the psychologists say that that's not a good thing to do because mm -hmm. you really are the parent and you really yeah. are the dominant, you know? Yeah. But it's... It's such a hard, hard when, yeah. when your child is in front of you crying yeah. and you, you know that they haven't eaten, you, you mm -hmm. give in because yeah. it's your heart. Yeah. You know, your heart yeah. is... You lead with your heart. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's not easy and there is no rule book. And 
you know, like, don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I think if that's you're not doing line, the yeah. best that you know you can do, don't feel bad don't because feel you bad, are yeah. doing the best that you can do with what you're, with the knowledge you have and the capabilities yeah. that you have. You know? Yeah, and I think um, something that I read once is that one of the benefits of eating together as a family is so that the kids see you eating the food and we, while they may not like oh. it at that moment, you know, they might just say, hmm, mom eating this, hmm, yeah. dad eating this. Yeah. Well, maybe I could just nibble, yes. you know, and they kind of model <laughs> off of you just because they want to, they love their mommy and their daddy, you yep. know? Yeah. <laughs> so yep. I think that's something that the parents could do. If you feel helpless, I mean, you have to eat too. So just eat in front of them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think what, and one of the things I also saw where it said was, um, yeah, you might give your child something once and they don't like it, but like you have to do it for like 12 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so just that, keep that, putting that it on their yeah, plate. Yeah, just to see and then eventually yeah. they yeah. will probably do it, I guess, coupled with see yeah. mommy and dad yeah. sitting on the table yeah. eating yeah. it then they start yeah. to consume it For sure. yeah. sometimes i ask them just to lick it can you please just <laughs> lick it just, yes. just pick it up and lick it yeah yeah and then that, for me that's a win yeah no it's, it is yeah. for me and i'm going to the story i was sharing earlier my nephew and my nieces are odd set of children mm -hmm. um because we're Jamaican, so mm -hmm. we grew up. I mean, I mean, they weren't born here; they were born in Europe. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But they literally, they don't like to eat meat. They would oh. literally tell their tell their mother, "Oh no, mommy, rice and ketchup." What? Rice and ketchup? Rice and ketchup. I've that's what never they, that's what I they want to eat. I rice and butter. Or, I hear rice and ketchup. Or rice, rice and ketchup, I used to eat that as a child. It's, really? it's yummy. Or oh. rice only. <laughs> or, oh, mm -hmm. just, just vegetables for me, mommy. What normal child said so they want yeah. to eat vegetables yeah. only? No, no dressing, no sauce, no whatever. Yeah. And yeah. that is all. Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, no, oh, I don't like the meat. Oh, let's not have the pork. Let's, let's try the chicken. And yeah. their mother literally begs them, try it. You like it. Try it. Yeah. No, don't want it. You have wow. a stew piece. Oh, mommy, no, n no meat. You just, you just want the peas and the rice. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, some people they do follow a vegetarian lifestyle. I am not a vegetarian. I'm, I'm plant heavy, so I try to get my kids to eat a lot of vegetables mm. and stuff. Yeah. But some, some kids just don't like the smell of meat. Yeah. There's also a texture thing. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. children are very particular when it comes to textures. Yeah. And even touch. Sometimes they don't yeah. want anything to mm -hmm. touch your hands. Like my kids will eat broccoli, good. but Sienna does not want wet broccoli. It can't mm. be soggy. Okay. So it can be steamed, but if it touches the water, she's yeah. not eating it. So. Yeah, no, that's fair. I think as a child, I didn't like... Oh, well, even now, I don't like cooked sweet peppers, but I'd eat raw sweet peppers. It was just something about how it got when it was cooked. It was soggy. It was, the, the taste even changed. It was like mm -hmm. bitter. And I was like, ew, no, but give me raw and I'll eat it. So I guess, yeah, texture. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I guess we're, we're all learning as we get older. We are right? all learning yeah. as we get older. Yeah. I was bringing me to my next question. Does picky eating follow a child into adulthood? Boy, I know some picky eater big people. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the struggles in my coaching practice, you know. Yeah. I do see the picky eater adults. Mm -hmm. I think I think though for the most part, mm -hmm. um, children grow out of it. Okay. So yeah. my eldest, again, she saw us all eating well around right. the table. And as I said, now I'm like, like my heart just sings so, when I see the yeah. meals because she's away at university. And when she right. sends me the pictures of what she's cooking, I'm just yeah. like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, she came around. Yeah. Right. And I'm really hoping that others follow yeah, suit. So, what do you so, think naturally, though? Like She did kind of come around naturally. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because nice. I don't believe in... I don't believe in forcing them. Of course, yeah. You know, because the forcing then leads to the retaliation and the rebellion and mm -hmm. that stuff. It's a fine, it's a really fine balancing act, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a really so fine do you think balancing. then that there's a place for picky eating generally in a society? Or do you frown upon it? Yeah, say, oh, like is it pepper. normal? Yeah. <laughs> Um, or do you just eating kids? No, what you said, no, you've seen no, some I see adults. No, I see adults as well. As well. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Being a picky eater, I think if you can, if you can get yourself out of being a picky eater, it's beneficial because one thing that we need is a variety of nutrition sources. Right. Mm -hmm. So when people just eat like within like a channel of these are the only foods I eat, mm -hmm. then you do not get the diversity in your micronutrients, right? Mm -hmm. You may be getting the macros, the carbohydrates, the proteins and the fats, yeah. but you may not be getting the minerals and the vitamins because that comes from variety. Right. And your gut, I'm sure we've all heard of gut health by now. Yes. It's a mm -hmm. big thing. Mm -hmm. We call it the microbiome. That's all the little critters that live in your gut. Yeah. And the, they thrive on variety. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm-hmm. and all health begins in the gut. Right. Yeah. Okay. Gaffin, are you a picky eater? Um, I'm actually not. You're There's not. some things mm. I know that I don't like to eat. Okay. Um, but for the most part, I'll eat everything. Okay. okay. In, in moderation because some things I don't like. Yeah. Taste. Yeah. Or I will. Um, there is there's something that I stay away from. For example, mm-hmm. what do you call it? Uh, okra. Mm. I love Cause it's slimy. That. Slimy. I don't like it. I don't like I anything. I don't like anything fish? slimy. Yes. You see you? No, I don't like yeah. anything slimy. Oh. Um, I stay away from shrimp, but that's because I'm allergic. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That, will, that will kill me. <laughs> um, but also, I don't know. I will, I will say that I would try... Level? Liver, I eat. I don't like it, but I'll eat it simply because. Then you're not a picky eater. Simply because of the health benefits. Yeah. No. If so you for me, can I, do I, I, like I that. I'm different. <laughs> and I, yeah. I, I have conversations with myself and mm-hmm. I rationalize it. So if it, I, it's not, I know it's, Good. I don't like it, but it's a means to living a better life. Mm-hmm. Then I will have it. Mm-hmm. Huh. And so sometimes if I do go to a restaurant and they have, you know, all other things I like to eat, I would probably say, okay. Give me the liver simply because I haven't had it in a while. I don't know. My doctor mm-hmm. says, da, 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 da. I don't want to mm-hmm. go on here. Oh, you're anemic. Or, right. Right, right. So I make a conscious effort to mm. put those things in my diet for that. So reason. if you can do that, then, then I don't think you fall into the category mm-hmm. of picky okay, eater. No. no. So what about. is that? So if you can make a concerted effort for your health as opposed to your um, pleasure, I guess, then you would not be considered a picky I don't think eater. so. Okay. Like a picky eater is going to be at the restaurant and go, you know, picking picking yeah. the peas out of the rice and peas. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. whereas right. um, a non-picky you eater just, is going to go, I don't, don't love the Correct. peas, yeah. but I'll, they're in it already, so I'll just eat so them. So i eat it, okay. Yeah. okay. Are you a picky eater? Yeah. Um, I don't think so, but I also would not order the liver. Like, even if I know it's good for me, I would say, what can I substitute for to get the same benefits? Yeah. But I don't think I'm a picky eater. There are things I don't like, but I'll still eat it if there's nothing else i'm not going to die of starvation because this is the only thing left in the world you know so yeah <laughs> yeah natalie you see, would, would you say you're a picky, yeah. picky eater no but i don't no. eat organ meat so i don't do liver yeah. i don't do tripe i don't do yeah. i don't do tongue kiss up oh, no, barely no, 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 no i don't yeah. do tongue i don't do foot for real yeah no i can't look at you have the to chicken yeah. nails you have to close your eyes and eat it you have to be like but oh, I like tail. Oh, that's why you made me try that sauce. Sauce. I did. Sauce. sauce. You ever yeah. had sauce in Trinidad? Mm-mm. Oh, God. It you tastes... never had sauce, Natalie? Mm-mm. I don't oh. know what it is. And she goes to Trinidad like, a lot. Um, you go to Carnival. Yeah, yeah, it's like pickled, pickled meat, I want to say. So it's, it's like you pickled have. Pickled chicken foot. It's chicken that's what foot, it is. It's pig it... tail, it's cow heel. Uh, and we have like. Um, cow heel? Yeah, cow heel. Oh. Right? And then you have like cucumbers and it's in a liquid. It's being preserved in the liquid, I would say. Trinis, don't crucify me if I'm not describing sauce properly yeah but this is what i think pickle meat is really good i don't believe that that would be high on my list of oh, no. preferable foods <laughs> i don't think no, it no, should no. be you either because it's not high on Gaffin, you can't no Same but i tried okay, it once but it was okay no it, it was not i did not like it <laughs> sasha you, you can't no. tell me <laughs> well, no, i feel like i saw you you kind of enjoyed it no. No? Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm mistaken. <laughs> you were like, on your face. Or it was something else, but no. Not, Maybe I not, wanted to see not, you yeah, so terribly. It's not the sauce at all. But it's okay. Yes. All right. So we, we've dealt with the picky eating. Um, mm-hmm. And we know we're going to move into, you know, the fun part of stuff. The yes. fun part. Where we're going to talk about our game. Mm-hmm. You know, every time I come on I come on one of these podcasts, I have to do something fun, something engaging. Yes. So Natalie, you're gonna be in the hot seat for this one. Mm. Oh boy. Couple oh, episodes, yes. couple episodes, <laughs> yeah. episodes you have me and Sash in the hot seat doing things, but for now, Great. we're gonna put you in the hot seat. Yes. So oh, this joy. game is called Fact versus Fiction. Okay. So I'm gonna read a scenario to you and then we're gonna discuss. Okay. <laughs> So you yes. want me to see if it's if it's fact or fiction? You can say that first. Yes. If it's okay. if it's fact, fiction, maybe okay. have some truth to it. Okay. You can okay. say yeah. that as well. All right. Kids and Sasha. Mm-hmm. Okay. I saw another part of the game that I did not say. Uh huh. That you're supposed to come up with a question to ask Natalie on the spot. So we're gonna we're gonna do this about the about the fact about or fiction. The, mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So wait. So you read <laughs> you read it. She says if it's fact or fiction, and I ask a question. 
Yeah, but at the end, so I'm going to ask my, my ones that I have here, oh. and then at the end, you're going to add one. It sounds okay. complicated. Okay. Yeah, it does. So <laughs> you, yours are based on picky eaters. Yeah. Okay, so mine will be based on sedentary lifestyle. Oh, then. dear. Okay. Let's just, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm thinking. Go ahead. Kids become picky because their parents let them be picky. Oh, we discussed Whoa. this. Yeah, we did. We did discuss this. This is an easy start. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> parents letting. I think that's a myth. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Why? Um... Because my daughter was born a picky yeah. eater. <laughs> <laughs> First hand experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so what I saw, um, a lot of persons were saying that um, some children become picky eaters because mm-hmm. of environmental factors. Uh-huh. And so that is why they refuse to try some of the new foods due to genetic um, genetics. And there's something that I just remembered. What? Some people avoid certain foods because it makes them feel bad. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. So, for example, if you don't eat red meat, for example, it can be because every time you eat red meat, you feel feel sick. sick. So then that child is not going to want to eat it because they don't want to eat something that makes them them feel feel sick. sick. Natalie, take my my point. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Sorry. And then this said, in some way, the child's body biologically impacts the taste of certain foods, Mm. making them unpalatable. Mm. What results may see, what adults may see as stubbornness or defiance Mm -hmm. is most often a real biological phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Picky eating may also be caused by a sense integration issue mm-hmm. where the child has hypersensitivities to yes. certain smells yes. tastes and textures in their mouth yeah oh wow huh. the no. first thing for parents to know is that they're for not real. insane they haven't trumped this up even when they're around them say it's not a problem wow no for wow. real <laughs> so i think the takeaway there is to ask your child yeah like mm-hmm. have conversations yeah, right? have Correct. a conversation Correct. and be like why don't you like grapes mm-hmm. i had to ask zara that the other day why you don't like the grapes she's like because it's just weird that there's a skin and you eat the skin and then it's like mushy on the inside and yeah. then it's like, so for her because yeah. sometimes they, yeah. know. Yeah. And, yeah. And, they know and, why, and their yeah. reaction is also valid and yeah. you can't Correct. take that away from Correct. them say, yeah sit on around the table and eat it until you're done. Yes. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, we're seeing that's not the way. Uh, but as I said, Natalie, to have the conversation mm-hmm. with them because yeah. they know the reasons mm-hmm. why they don't want yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you got that one right. Yay. <laughs> Second, my child's pediatrician says she's fine, so there's nothing to worry about. I love doctors. I have a lot of very close doctor friends. Like this is a disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sounds, it a sounds disclaimer. like a bush. It's somewhere Doctors there. are very yeah. important. Yes. Right. So, so we'll just get that out there. Right. right. But doctors do not spend a whole lot of time on nutrition training in school, which mm-hmm. is one of the reasons that health coaches like myself have right. work. Right. Yeah. So um, doctors are going to look and, and look at the growth charts mm-hmm. and be like, the child is growing. They are an appropriate. And by the the, the, range, the range is very wide. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be like, okay, they're growing. Yes, 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 yes. But we're not seeing optimal. What a mm-hmm. lot of the medical profession does mm-hmm. is they look at normal. And as a population changes, then normal changes. Because what is normal? Right. What most people are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So a pediatrician may say the child is fine, but they, are they fine? Do you want fine or do you want best? Yeah. Do you want fine or do you want yeah. optimal? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Okay. So myth. 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 Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yay. <laughs> and I'll tell you what this says. When a parent brings a picky eating concern to the child's pediatrician, the response is often something like, well, her weight is on the growth curve, so she must be fine. Wait a bit and she'll outgrow it. Although this may be true occasionally, picky eating is not a stage for many children. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's not a stage not for many stage, children. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So you got that right, Natalie. Okay. So that's two of two. Nice. Next one. You can prevent a child from becoming a picky eater. Hey, hey. Mm. <sighs> there might be some truth to this one. Because I think as if we expose our children to a variety of taste profiles early in their eating career, yeah. if that's a thing, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, then we broaden their palate. But the palate does change as we get older. So what you like to eat as a child will change and evolve. Like I right. never ate Brussels sprouts as a child and right. I love Brussels sprouts no. now, yeah. you know. But when you, like if you give onions. a... Um, mm. 
if you if you add sugar to things to, to, to entice a child, or if you even allow a child to eat candy, mm -hmm. they're not gonna want to eat their broccoli because yeah. nothing sweet about broccoli. Well, broccoli of course, it's yeah. true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. You know, so yeah. So it's funny that you say that because one of the things that this said, I'm gonna segue. Mm -hmm. I've been gonna push past a lot. They should mm -hmm. continue offering these foods even after they've been re rejected multiple times, which we spoke about. Yes. Research shows it can take up to a... Oh, I'm going to bright. Because I said this. You then. <laughs> it said research, research shows that it can take up to a dozen times for mm -hmm. a rejected food to finally become accepted. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's still normal. So, yeah. Yeah. Natalie, you're right again. Yeah. <laughs> Is your child really hungry? No. If your child is really hungry, he will eat. So I've actually heard parents, yeah. people say that yeah. before. You leave them sitting at the table and them, when they get hungry now, they're going to eat stuff. They will eat it. Yeah. <laughs> but our, I think our pediatrician used to tell us that we live in a first world country. There's ample food in the house. The child is not going to starve themselves. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about that one. Yeah. yeah. According to you said, it's a myth. Mm -hmm. So many pediatricians suggest that. Parents refuse to offer alternative foods to children, a suggestion um, that, ra he that he rallies against. Imagine if someone told you that the only food available <laughs> for dinner was dog food <laughs> and you could either eat the dog food or starve. I might starve. Understanding yes. that, oh, I think all of us will. <laughs> Understanding that many picky eaters actually detest the taste of certain foods can mm. change your attitude from confrontational to understanding. So it's something that we alluded to earlier. Yeah. Understanding the why, why. as why, to yeah. the reason Behind, for not what yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I love this part. Mm. Change your attitude from confrontational to understanding. So as you said, yeah. have a have conversation, conversation. Yeah. and then see where it goes. Because they're small, but they're humans. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, what's interesting and it's coming to mind now is that um, I think when we think of eat your vegetables, mm -hmm. we think that the vegetable has to be eaten in its vegetable form, like in that Correct. whole. Yes. Like yes. You eat your broccoli, here it is, it's steamed. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Like a kid yeah. might not like steamed yeah. broccoli, yeah. but if you chop it up really fine mm -hmm. and mix it up in fry rice, yeah. Yeah. then it's just the rice became green. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah, yeah, yeah. broccoli in its yeah. whole form. Yeah. So I think I think us parents. We need to change like the way that we frame it yeah. for ourselves. Yeah, right. well. mindset that and we you, have. you also have like smoothies because yeah. I've had a pretty yeah. good good green smoothie before. Yeah. You have everything that, that I need. You probably yeah. just chop some pineapples in there, maybe some green mm -hmm. apples to change it, uh, yeah. the, the the flavor profile yeah. to make it sweet and and then put it in the freezer, make a popsicle. Popsicle there we go. and yeah. they yeah and they're good. We See? make some yummy smoothies See? at the life store. Uh, yeah, yeah. We might, not be parents, <laughs> we might not be parents, but, but we're yeah. you got it going on. Yeah. And my last one. Yes. There are treatment options that can help picky eaters. What, like shock therapy? <laughs> <laughs> we hope um, not. <laughs> that sounds really intense. I. Mm. No, I mean, but we, we remember we spoke about some some, some yeah, of it earlier. But I think I'm the, sure the, the phrase uh, treatment option yeah. sounds, sounds very scary. <laughs> yeah, like, like here, yeah. here's this pill to cure your child yeah. of, or put them of with um with on their head. Yes, you know, the, the electrodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think I think I guess yeah, you would because if you want to call a treatment option, allowing them to repeatedly try the food, try uh -huh. the food in different formats. There we go. Yeah, you know, have the conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yes. yes. So it yes. actually is fact. True. Yeah. So you're not doomed fact. to your yeah. parents. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Some of the techniques to say they can help picky eaters. Yeah. Um, be a good role model. Eat your vegetables and show your ch child that you are willing to try new foods. So that's about the around right. the table conversation. Yes. Invite over friends who enjoy a variety of foods. Sometimes peer pressure. Oh God. Yeah, but you never see that. Into, yeah. A child see another child eating something and they realize, wow, I could do this too. And they go and they, they might take a snack or ask them, you know? Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. or switch lunches at school. Oh, yeah. I used to do that in primary school a lot. <laughs> right? Yeah, because I don't like my food and their food always looks so much better. So, like, you want to switch? <laughs> I remember a child used to come to school. This is before I knew what Nutella was, right? Yeah. I went to Immaculate yeah. Prep School and a child, she was, a, a, an, she was an overseas student. Mm -hmm. She would bring chocolate sandwiches to school. I was like, how are you so lucky like, yeah. that you get chocolate in your bread? Like, <laughs> Nutella. <laughs> the other one says, take it slowly. When introducing a new food, try to pair it with a food that mm. your child enjoys. Yes. Serve only a small amount of the new food to avoid overwhelming your child. Yeah. Okay, we spoke about that. Yeah. Make eating 
new foods fun you yes. just mentioned in cut your child's vegetables in interesting shapes mm -hmm. and let your child dip them in health into a healthy dressing yeah Oh, like because stars and moon yeah. and yeah, that yeah, type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Smiley faces. Mm -hmm. Create a garden. Oh, this new girl need the art space, Sasha. Yeah. Create no, a garden and let tetra. your child help you to grow the foods that you would like them to eat. We could start off in the little tetra, 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 tetra boxes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Put some like little egg those. cartons yeah. Yeah. to start the seeds and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, see, there, so, so you're right. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's true. There are ways that we can help our kids. And I think even some of us adults yeah. yes, can definitely. use some of these methods definitely. to get away from our picky eating ways. Yeah. But I didn't want to just ask one question because I have no questions as it relates to the game. I was thinking about it. So I so was, I was into yeah I was, I was it's a couple I was so into the game I forgot to think of my questions but as a mom um what are some ways I guess that you have um, probably used in the past to get your kids active active yes Whew. so we take what they like to do mm -hmm. and make it um make it into a something a something that they do. Okay. Like regularly. So my, um, I keep going back to Zara for some reason, yeah. <laughs> but she loves K-pop. Okay. Right. So she likes the K-pop dances yes. that, you know. What's mm -hmm. K-pop? A Korean pop music. Caffeine. Come on. Come on. Blackpink, oh, yeah. BTS. I only know BTS, but I know the, the term K-pop. <laughs> <laughs> is a thing yes. I, so she'll, she'll put on the k-pop dancing whatever yeah. whatever on the tv yeah. and my girl is there dancing fun hour yeah. now you know i think her dad would love it if she was on the tennis court a little more often right. doing but she likes to play tennis but she loves the dancing, dancing. so i'm thinking the dancing is movement any kind of movement it, you yeah. know mm -hmm. okay gonna push her that way yeah, yeah encourage. encourage. I'm not encourage. pushing. I'm encouraging. <laughs> See, that's why I'm not a parent. It's a gentle yeah, push. It's a gentle yeah. Because that's they'll funny. retaliate, you know. Yeah. Or yeah. I'll say to them, because we actually, we actually, we actually, have, <laughs> we actually have, we actually have, we actually have, we actually have one treadmill at yeah. home, which I got during COVID because okay. I was like, ah, what are you going to do? Yeah. So I like, I let them watch what they want to watch. Mm -hmm. If they're watching it on the treadmill. treadmill. Right, oh. so, so they're they on Netflix and they're watching Netflix yeah. and they're on the treadmill. Yeah. So. Can we just double back on that a little bit? Because you yeah. spoke about um, COVID. Can you share with us like what are some of the implications that had on not only you, but your kids and that their nutrition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they had like nonstop unfettered access to the fridge, mm. <laughs> which was okay. scary. Because yeah. you know what adults do when they're bored? They eat. eat Kids yeah. do when they're bored? Yeah. They eat. You just find yeah. yourself in front of the fridge just yeah. looking in, just peering in. <laughs> what's, what's in here for <laughs> yeah. me today? So there was, there was that. Then there was also the fact that they weren't even walking from class to class. They, weren't, they didn't have PE. They weren't outside. Yeah. So they just were like bumps on logs in front of mm. devices. And it was like horrible you yeah. know yeah. yeah and then they also they also had um a fear thing so we were talking earlier before yeah. we started about yeah. how the fact that i was afraid to look people in the eyes at the supermarket right yes. when there was covid for fear that covid would jump from their eyes to mine yes. which yeah. is completely right. yeah. ridiculous <laughs> but the kids were so afraid because remember that they, our children got picked up one day at school and never saw their friends for two yeah. years mm -hmm. yeah like they didn't know that that was going to happen, yeah, right? Yeah, so true. they were afraid to even like go outside. They wanted to just stay at home, stay in yeah. bed. And then the depression came in. And when you get depressed, what do you want to do? You want to stay in bed. So you barely yeah. have to put on a shirt to make yeah. it to your, your computer to do your online class. So. Yeah. And the lethargy, it just, it just crept in. And then mm. the depression crept in. And a lot yeah. of kids did not augur well yeah. during the COVID thing. So, so their health, their physical and their mental health were affected. Impacted, yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. I think that's that was it for a lot of us yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Then we're now just come well and mm -hmm. I can speak for myself where mm -hmm. I said I am doing something about it. Mm -hmm. Good. And you know, I'm eating better, I'm going to yeah. the gym. Yeah. And I know Sasha not I doing the same thing. I see you at the gym. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I know Sasha not doing the same thing. I mean hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave you alone, Sasha. I'm gonna leave you alone. Anyway, yeah. that that's it for us um yeah. for this week. And a great discussion. As Sasha mm -hmm. ha had said, we spoke about you know the adults a lot yeah. um but for this particular episode i wanted to dive a little bit in uh, about the kids the and little yeah. the little people yeah. and how Man. things affected them covid of how course. their own diets um, and their eating habits affect them and then mm -hmm. how we as parents can relate oh we as parents mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. Speaking mm -hmm. into existence. About, <laughs> <laughs> about how parents can yeah. can can relate to them to kind of yeah. you know make it a little bit easier not yeah. only on them but on 
us as a parent. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's fair to say we because we may not be parents, but we support parents. Correct. We are the aunties, the uncles. Correct. Correct. We, are, we are the community. Yeah. We are the village. We are the community. And it takes Correct. a village. It yeah. takes a village. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So I really hope that uh, this episode will actually, you have learned something from it. Yeah. Um, with lots of nuggets were shared. And so we would just want you to be able to, again, to take nuggets from it and apply it to your lives, mm -hmm. apply it to your children's lives so that they can, you know, Live well, live well as, we, as, yes. as we have been saying yes. <laughs> um it was been a fantastic time to have natalie yes. thank you thank so you much so for your yes. input thank you yes. and again if you guys want to check her out at the live store or mm -hmm. holy nice things in oh and there. i heard they have smoothies so where are you taking me after this to get some smoothies at the live yes. store guys that's where we're going <laughs> to the airport that's where we're going to go <laughs> 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 but guys it has been it has been great um thank you so much for joining us remember yes. be a part of the conversation we want to hear your feedback we want to hear um any comments that you that you have so mm -hmm. it's on all socials nestle caribbean yes. um we're gonna that's what, all we're gonna leave with you today yeah. mm -hmm. remember always you know live well be well and Get that's well. it signing off